everyone, welcome to this week's West Howe Community Enterprises cooking video. We're going to be making ratatouille um, and I'll just show you all the ingredients that I've got to make that. Uh, ratatouille can go with a variety of things. Um, it's really good with a hunk of really nice fresh bread, uh, but today I'm going to make it with a jacket potato. So we've got that here. Um, things for your ratatouille. So we have a couple of aubergines and some courgettes. I've got um, uh, onion, peppers, chopped tomatoes, and then the usual salt and pepper and dried mixed herbs, some garlic, pre-chopped uh, pre but it doesn't need to be, and some vegetable oil, and then a tube of tomato puree. So um, that's everything that we need to get started. The first thing I'm going to do is get the jacket potato going in the microwave. It's a really good way to cut the cooking time. So I'm gonna pop that in before I start with the ratatouille. I'm gonna prick it all over with this knife. You can use a fork too, um, just to pierce the skin. And I'm going to put it on, the, um, on a high temperature in the microwave um, for six minutes, um, and then I'll check it at that point. Brilliant. Okay, so while that's happening, um, we need to prepare the vegetables. I've got this really large pan, and I'm going to put a little bit of vegetable oil into the bottom. Fairly generous with this. Make sure you coat the bottom of the pan. And we need a spoon to move that around with. And I'm going to put that on a low heat. Then I'm going to, first of all, chop up the onions. So I'm just going to put you on pause while I make a start with that and the microwave makes its noises. Okay, so I've got my one onion chopped up nice and fine over here. And I'm gonna do a red onion as well. You can use whichever color onions you have available. I just happen to have one red and one white in the kitchen. Uh, this is gonna make six portions or six adult portions of ratatouille. So that's why we've got all this veg, but believe me, you need it all because it's going to break down as we cook it. And this is a really good filling dish that you can have even on its own, just, um, just as a, a warming lunch. You, you don't necessarily need to have it even with potato or bread. Um, it's filling because it's got all the vegetables in and because it cooks quite slowly, the flavour is really, really good with this. A bit of a Mediterranean one too. So I've just taken off the outside of the onion there because it's a little bit dry. And you want it to be reasonably small pieces. finished okay so we have our two onions I'm just going to pop those straight into the pan with the oil and just move that around a little bit to break the pieces up um, the next thing we need to chop is our peppers any color of pepper will work I have one red and one yellow I'm going to give them a scrub um, under some warm water before I chop them up because they've just been um, in a crate in the supermarket Right, and uh, so our six minutes for the potato is done. I'll just take that out and have a look and show you where that's got to. Okay, 
Okay, so it's quite a big potato. I don't know if you can see the skin has started to wrinkle and move away from the uh, the majority of the potato body at the top, but not quite as much as we would like. This is sort of the pre-cooking stage to save you time in the oven. So I'm going to put that back in for a couple more minutes. And while that happens, I'm going to chop the peppers. So we need to get rid of the green stalk and the seeds from the inside. They're quite bitter, so you don't really want to put all of those in there. It doesn't matter if a few get in. And I take out the, the white part here as well, because that's also quite bitter. Sometimes this will come out a lot more neatly than others, but it doesn't matter because we're going to chop it all up anyway. Make sure you keep an eye on your pan just so that you know that it's getting hot but it's not sticking. Okay. So I'm just going to do sort of finger width um, slices with the pepper and then chop them across into sort of little cubes, I suppose. It can be a little bit bigger than the pieces of the onion. Make sure you don't get the juice from these peppers in your eye because it will really sting. going to put you on pause while I cut this one up. Okay so the microwave is pinged again and I've got all of the pepper chopped up so that's going to go in the pan. You might be able to hear it sizzling a little bit now as it heats up so the onion and peppers are starting to cook nicely. Just give that another stir. This is going to be a really colourful dinner. Okay so I'll just grab the potatoes so that we can see where that is. Okay, so we have a nice wrinkly looking potato um, and you will notice it's got a bit more give in it. Do be careful not to burn yourself checking that, but um, that nice wrinkly texture just means that we've, we've done a bit of the cooking so it won't need to be in the oven for too long. Um, so I'm going to put the oven on now to 220 degrees and just set the potato to one side. give this a little stir. So we're going to be chopping up our two courgettes and aubergines now. Um, so again give those a scrub um, with some warm water and I use a dish sponge with a little bit of detergent and then rinse afterwards just because they've been loose in the supermarket so you don't know what they've touched. So I'm just going to put you on pause while I do that. Okay so I'm going to chop up the courgette first. Um, need to just get rid of the very ends because they've got the stalky bits and then I'm going to do again sort of finger width sections and then cut those into quarters so that they're a similar size chunk to the peppers. You'd 
be able to hear the vegetables in the pan are simmering away nicely now. Make sure that you give it an occasional stir. If it's a bit dry, then you can pop some more oil in. The vegetables will be releasing liquid, so it should be okay though. Um, and you can, um, if you've got an electric hob like me, you might need to turn it down slightly once it's got up to heat so that it doesn't get too hot. Um, it just depends on, on your hob, but you want it to be cooking and not burning. So this is a bit laborious. We're just going for quarters with our courgette. Um, so I'm going to do the rest of this one and this one um, and then come right back to you. Okay, so I have all of this courgette chopped up ready. Uh, you might be worried that this is an awful lot of courgette, but believe me that, you know, we need the vegetables to, to make this a nice filling meal. And courgette's fantastic. It's got a very mild flavour and a nice soft texture and it soaks up the flavours. So it goes really well with a lot of different meals and it's really good for you. And it's also very cheap. So it's a great thing. You can chuck it in almost any dish and it will go. Uh, but it is a traditional part of the ratatouille that we're making. Now, the next thing is to cut the aubergines. But before we do that, I'm just going to suggest that you shake and open your tin tomatoes. And the reason for that is that um, aubergines, once they've been chopped up and they've been exposed to the air, go brown really quickly. So as soon as they're chopped, we want to put them in the pan with the tomatoes covering them so that they don't go brown. Um, it's not the end of the world if they go brown. It won't change the flavour. It just doesn't look as nice in your finished meal. Um, you, want, you want a dish that looks nice and tastes nice. So I'm going to pop the courgettes in first and give them a stir. It's looking very full in our pan. This week might be the week that I do the two pan trick that I was talking to you about last week. I'll just move that round a bit. What do we think? So we're almost at capacity in the big pan. So I think I will do that. It's a good demonstration as well. So I'm going to turn the next ring along, uh, put the heat on that, and mix all of these different vegetables together. And I'm going to put some of this pan into another pan just to give us a bit more space. The thing with doing this is once the vegetables are broken down, you can put them back into one pan at the end. So you don't need to be very exact. It's just that at the moment, we've got lots of very big, relatively uncooked vegetables taking up space. It makes it quite hard to stir. So. This is something that if you make the recipe a few times, then you'll know that you have limited space so you'll know in advance whether you need to do this or not. Um, I haven't tried to make a quantity this large of ratatouille in my kitchen before so I had not realised quite how much space I would need. I get a little bit of everything into here just to make sure the flavours are mixing. Okay so that should be fine right? like that it just gives us a bit more room to be able to keep things moving so that everything's getting cooked evenly okay so i've got the tomatoes open ready to go um for the aubergines we want to top and tail them like we did with the courgette and then slice them exactly the same really and we don't want any of this green stuff it's quite a strange sensation cutting through the aubergine they're almost foamy but that will change in the cooking. Okay, so just slices. I don't use aubergine in very many recipes and it's something that I always enjoy when I go out somewhere and I'm given food with aubergine. I, I think I must use it more often um, but it's a great vegetable, it's got a really nice texture when it's cooked and it is absolutely the most important part of a ratatouille. You can't have a ratatouille without aubergine. It's quite soft, like the courgette, it will soak up the flavours, 
so we're going to cut this up into similar size pieces and I'm going to put it straight into the pan as I go along. So I'm doing these pieces into six because they're quite wide. It's important to try and get everything to a similar size so that everything's cooked a similar amount. I don't know if you can see, but we're starting to get brown already. Put some into each pan. lovely and easy to pick up. Of course if I was a chef I'd have done this by now um, because I cut very slowly but we're not competing here you can take as long as you need to take. Okay so that's the first aubergine so I'm going to put a tin of tomatoes into each pan that up. Just stir that in. Okay. Other fun thing is that the aubergine squeaks a little bit whilst it's cooking. I don't know if you can hear that. So making a little squeaky noise. Okay, aubergine number two. If you watch much American television, like I think we probably all do, um, you might have heard them talking about eggplant, and eggplant is what the Americans call aubergine. Um, so that's that's what we're eating. We're eating eggplant. I guess it's kind of an egg-like shape, maybe. definitely needed the two pans, they are both really full now. You might be worrying that I've forgotten the potato, but I haven't. I'm um, waiting for the oven to get up to temperature. Um, the jacket potato, because we've pre-cooked it, should only need about 20 minutes in the oven. And our ratatouille, we're going to leave to cook for half an hour once we've got everything in here. So that's why I've not put the potato in just yet. Um, obviously, you need as many potatoes as you have people eating and you can always cook them um, part way and get them ready for an, for use another day if you want to save time. I'm just doing one because I'm eating on my own so I only need one potato. Um, right so everything's coated in tomatoes so the pans at the moment look like this lots of huge bits of quite raw veggies um, in a sea of tomato and they're both starting to, to sizzle away and making squeaking noises which is brilliant. Um, so I'm going to add a few more things to these pans. Um, we're going to put a bit of salt and pepper in at this stage but we will then check and see if we want to add more later on. So I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of salt onto both pans and a small amount of pepper. I normally go 
for loads of pepper but I tend to add most of it at the end and some dried mixed herbs as well. So I'm going to go for a level teaspoon in each pan. And the garlic, which is chopped up. What I should have said earlier on was that if your garlic isn't already chopped, you want to put that in before the aubergine and tomato. I'm just realising that now. So I will ensure the recipe card will say that on it to add the, um, the garlic to fry it earlier on. It's not a problem when it's small pieces like this, but if it's larger cloves, you might want to put it in earlier. So I'm going to add... Um, a level teaspoon to each of these pans so that it totals two teaspoons. I normally do use the pre-cooked garlic because it's very reasonably priced and it keeps for quite a long time. Um, if you buy a whole clove of garlic you sort of need to use it in a relatively short amount of time because otherwise it dries out and loses its flavour. Um, but the, the pre cut stuff like that you can keep it in the fridge for quite a few weeks mm. and just add as much as you need so it's really really useful ingredient but it's completely up to you how you want to do that I'm gonna just oh make a mess give this a stir love all of the beautiful colors okay quite hard to stir at the moment but don't worry it's going to break down and get lovely and soft um, and the final thing I'm going to put in is just some tomato puree just to add a bit more of a rich tomato flavour um, so I in the recipe I've suggested two tablespoons um, <laughs> oh, excuse me <laughs> sneezing um, I suggested two tablespoons in the recipe. Um, as I've mentioned in previous weeks, the standard dessert spoon that we usually have in our kitchen drawers is smaller than a tablespoon that you see in cooking recipes. Um, you need one and a half dessert spoons to make one tablespoon. So just be aware of that when you see in recipes because a lot of us don't have a traditional tablespoon in our houses. So I'm using one and a half of this dessert spoon kind of an approximation because it's paste um, one and a half into each pan I think tomato puree is another brilliant ingredient because it just adds a richness and depth of flavor to anything that you're making and again it's a very cheap ingredient it's good for you and you can keep it in the fridge for quite a while so you don't need to use it all up in one go Right, I'm going to give all this a stir and have a little tidy and come right back to you. Okay, so I've just moved some things around. We've got our two pans with some nice smells coming from them. They're both bubbling away very quietly. We've got a way to go now for the vegetables to cook down. But all you really need to do with these now is just periodically give them a stir so that the vegetables rotate. Um, we're going to cook those for half an hour. And then the oven is up to temperature. Before the potato goes in the oven, I'm going to rub it with some oil and some salt because that helps the skin to crisp up. So at the moment we have this nice, nice plain jacket. This is going to be a little bit messy. Um, so I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil onto here so that the salt has something to stick to and just rub that into the outside of the potato. Okay, nice and oily. I'm going to wash my hands before I do anything else because I can't touch the salt now. And then we have 
add our salt. Quite generous with this. And I'm going to flip it over with the forks just so that I don't have to wash my hands. So that's nicely coated. This is going to go in the oven and I'm going to do the, put the timer on now. So the suggestion is that if you have microwaved your potatoes first for six minutes or so like I did, you should find that the jacket potato will be cooked in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, now you just need to keep an eye on it because we want to time it so that everything's ready together. On the whole with a jacket potato cooking it slower and for longer is usually a good thing. Um, if we hadn't used the microwave at all you'd be looking at about an hour and a half in the oven to cook the potato from scratch so that's the difference that the microwave has made. Um, so I'm going to set the timer for in 20 minutes to check the potatoes then. and turn that down to 200. So the potato is going to be in the oven for 20 minutes at 200 and these are going to just continue to simmer away on their low heat. What we should find in 20 minutes is that the jacket potato should be nearly done, if not completely done, and the ratatouille in the pot should have broken down in size and softened up um, and then we'll just need to give the final bit of cooking. So I'm going to come back to you when the oven time beeps. Okay, so my 20 minute oven timer has just gone off. It's given me the perfect opportunity to do the washing up whilst that's been cooking. These pans, as promised, you can see the vegetables have really shrunk down in size. So they're cooking nicely, really great smell coming from both of those and I've just stirred them a couple of times in between. Uh, the sauce that they're in is really becoming a sauce now. You can see that the vegetables are kind of blending into it, so it's this lovely, thick, rich tomato -y sauce. We're going to have a look at the potato now and see if it's cooked. Oops. So the skin is crispy enough that I can hear it when I poke it. I don't know if that was loud enough for the video to pick up. I'm just turning it over. Okay, so it has got quite a bit of give in it, so it's definitely cooked, but I think that could be fluffier. We have another 10 minutes of ratatouille cooking time, so not a problem. I'm going to pop the oven back on and put the potato back in for the final 10 minutes. Now, if your potatoes are cooked at this stage, I would just turn the oven off and leave them in there so that they stay warm. They're not going to burn um, if the oven's off, but this is why all potatoes are gonna cook slightly differently depending on the potato's freshness, what type of potato it is, and how big it is as well. So you do need to keep checking, but this is a good demonstration of um, of contingency planning and uh, as I say we've got 10 more minutes on the ratatouille so that should be plenty of time to just finish that potato off so I'm putting another 10 minutes onto the oven timer if you don't have an oven timer just use a clock or your phone anything will do um, make sure that nothing's sticking there I've turned the heat down slightly as well because once everything's hot it doesn't need quite as much heat under it so it's just on the lowest possible setting. So I'm not quite going to put those into the pan together because I think it will be difficult to stir. I'll do that right at the end. Um, now also might be a good opportunity to just see if you want to put any more seasoning in here. Um, be really careful because this is going to be very hot. Because I have two pans, I need to try both of them separately. That's got a really nice rich tomato flavour. You can tell that the vegetables are giving some of their juice as well. Um, I don't think that needs any more salt. Let's just check this one. I'm eating all of this myself, so I'm not going to use a clean spoon, but please, if you're cooking for other people, don't use the same spoon twice because it's really gross. Mm. 
delicious and actually they both taste remarkably the same even though we did split the pans but we will as i say at the end we will put them into one pan together just to make sure that everything's consistent if you need to add at this point pop some more salt or pepper in there by all means do add that but of course you can always allow people to put as much as they want in at the end when it's being served so i'm going to come back to you in 10 minutes when this should all be done and we should be ready to serve it up okay so the 10 minute time has gone off and i think we're all done we have our two delicious pans of ratatouille. This is really nice and thick now. Um, and the size of the vegetables, I mean, everything's kind of half size. So I'm going to put it into one pan just to make sure that we've got an even flavor, really. Um, it should just about fit. You can see how nice and thick that is. This is um, the sort of thing that once you know how to do it, it's a really quick recipe um, to put together, you know, just chop up the vegetables and throw it in the pot while you're doing something else. But it keeps really well, it reheats really nicely. You can even have this cold and it goes with pretty much everything. You can have this with rice. Um, I think a jacket potato, it's, it's delicious with a jacket potato, maybe grate a little bit of cheese on top as well. I'm going to have the potato today and then tomorrow I'll probably have it with um, a nice fresh baguette which is a bit of a favourite of mine so I'll just bring it up to the camera so that you can see this is this is what we've got now um, so it's a gorgeous colour it's that lovely rich red but you can still see a bit of the colour from the individual vegetables so I mean there's nothing in there that's fatty or bad for you. Everything in there is gonna do you good. It's gonna make you feel really full and warm and it tastes delicious. So really happy with that. Let's see how the potato is doing. Wow, that smells good. And you can tell that it's had the salt on the outside because that's the kind of whiff that you get. So yes, we have a nice crispy potato. A spoon's probably not the best way to illustrate that. I just happen to have it nearby. So I've got a nice crispy skin there and I can feel that there's a good soft inside. Um, it's definitely worth doing the first bit of the cooking with the microwave because it does just cut the time. I'm going to serve that up and have that 